Hey YouTube, welcome back to Gaijin Hideout. We're live right now. We're gonna check out uh, this uh, cool video. I'm I'm Jeff. I'm a uh, I'm a new streamer to Monster Hunter, and uh, I've been playing as a hammer main uh, for like the last five or six streams. And I wanted to kind of look around for other weapons eventually in the future. Now that I've gone from low rank to high rank. Uh, so we're going to check out Rage Gaming videos. Which weapon is best for you? Uh, one minute ranking, easiest to hardest uh, for Monster Hunter World. Uh, if you want to see me live, either playing the game or covering the games, go to twitch.tv slash gaijinhideout and follow me there. All right, let's get into this. Ladies, gentlemen, and monsters of all ages with the Return to World event in full swing in Monster Hunter World, and the game recently... I'm not a bow user. <laughs> Don't tell them that. ...hitting over 100,000 peak players on Steam, and Steam being a relatively unpopular way to wow. play the game, given keyboard and mouse controls are a bit of a problem, and the game seven originally months released ago. on consoles seven months before coming to PC, so a lot of the more committed people are over on the consoles, and we don't really have player metrics for console, so it's easy to assume that the player base just as a whole has really kicked up a ton using the Steam charges example that sure said, this surge contains a lot of returning players and even a bunch of new players too and one thing that every new player wonders and honestly even returning players too when starting a new playthrough is what weapon should i use which one is right for me which will i enjoy the most and which will well it's more like which hammer we've established that most of these weapons are actually hammers when you think about it so which it's which hammer bring me the most right. success well here's a handy dandy flow chart that i put together if you want a really quick answer but with tons of people starting new playthroughs i thought it would be what what Whoa, okay. Well, okay, well, wait a minute. Let's let's look through this. What weapon should you use? You want to play Monster Hunter World. Do you like big numbers? Uh, you guys remember this chart? Do you like big numbers? Uh, I like big numbers. Do you want to avoid attacks with movement? Do you want to avoid attacks with movement or with blocks and hyper armor? Uh, move shoulder tackle or movement? Oh, do you want to avoid attacks with movement or with blocks and hyper armor? Uh, I guess blocks. Uh, is this the shoulder tackle blocks? Uh, so that's great sword. Okay, so hammer's like, what if you could bonk, but you could block, right? Bonk or stand your ground. Okay. Well, that kind of that kind of answered it for me pretty quickly. So, okay. So, what if I don't like big numbers? Do you like small numbers? I don't like small numbers, but let's say like maybe I don't like. So, greatsword won immediately. Let's see what. Let's say, but let's pretend like big numbers wasn't that enjoyable for me. Um, I don't like small numbers. Do you want to use pure offense? Yes, dual blades. Okay, that's interesting because that's just those two off the bat were the ones I was thinking about was greatsword and dual blades. So. Um, Let's say I do like small numbers. Do you want to use a ranged weapon? No. Do you want a transforming weapon? Yeah. So wait. So so then. So then switch axe comes through small numbers. Is that, is that how this works? So do you want a transforming weapon? Heavy learning curve with guard counters or explosive penetration? Learning time or excuse me, <laughs> explosive penetration. Switch axe for so you use switch axe for explosive penetration, charge blade for learning time. Back over here, by the way, if you like medium sized numbers, I guess, and you want a shield, you want some defense. Um, I don't, I don't know if we want shields. So, swax is relatively low. Okay, well, charge blade always gets put in the learning curve area. Yeah. Uh. Do you want a transforming weapon? No. Do you want a sh Okay, so these are your transforming weapons. Do you want a shield, lance, or gun lance? Do you want to learn about monster hit zones? Yes. What? I will say gun lance seemed pretty cool to me. So, it, But these are all like kind of mid-tier interest, I would say. Gun, gun lance, charge blade, switch axe. They're all kind of together for me. Um, do you have patience? No. Are you a weeb? No. <laughs> yes, you are. Okay. Are you a weave? Yes. Easy mode counters and flashy gameplay or difficult weapon that can buff allies with music. Music, long sword. Okay, look about the weave thing. Okay, see, I wasn't crazy for titling my video uh, long, uh, the long sword video like the anime weapon. It's the weave weapon. Um, okay. 
And then if you have pay, so it seems like for me, like if, if I'm just looking at these questions, the order in which I would answer them, like the most yes to the most no would be, uh, well, if I never played the game, I would have said hammer. I would have said hammer, but now that I play the game and I've done hammer. Uh, I, I would like a, I would like a block thing. Um, so that's great sword. And then it would be, so it's hammer, great sword, dual blades, um, and uh, these just aren't in the game in my mind. These ranged weapons, <laughs> uh, and then and then it would be switch X, charge blade, gun lance, and like another tier of its own. And then um, I would say, you know what? I'll give I'll give uh, I'll give bow a shot because of what I saw with the video. So I would then I would say another tier below that would be like. Uh, just out of like curiosity and stuff like hunting horn, long sword, bow, and then um, another tier below that would be sword and shield and lance, and then at the bottom would be insect glaive, heavy bow gun, light bow gun. <laughs> I think just going off the top of my, just going off the bat, insect glaive looks insane. I just like we could save that for last. Charge blade, you guys have charge blade swacks and and gun lance. You guys have encouraged me are not that hard, but like it still like it seems like it would be tough, um, you know. And then the the ones I said were the first tier, like my pure dopamine thing. So um, that that's like what I know is going to get me do dopamine. I'm gonna tell you right now, you'll completely forget about the block mechanic on Great Sword. <laughs> do it all to be honest, if you can. Most complete experience. Feel great. You'll feel like a master. I will tell you right now. Um, I plan on doing them all. I don't see a reason why not. Um, the question is just how quickly that'll happen. Um, I just want to, you know, once I really solidify my content schedule with, with monster hunter, you know, um, and, uh, and am able to put in, confirm how many hours exactly, exactly I want to put in, then I'll start determining like per week, then I'll like determine, um, how much of that's going to go to like learning new stuff and when, because I did that with dragon's dogma and I really liked the experience. And the only issue with dragon's dogma was that like learning every different vocation was, uh, you know, I maxed, we over leveled in the world pretty fairly quickly. It was still difficult because you would switch to a new thing and it would be like, you know, you get your, I'd get my ass kicked until I got it figured out. But, um, monster hunter, it seems like there's much more scaling options. Like, it seems like there's a, a plethora of easy missions to start out on and a plethora of, like, hard hard things. So, um, solo Black Dragon with every weapon stream incoming. So, do we want to kill him? Yes, fair. Okay. All right, they're already setting me up to die. I'm just going to continue on before chat gets too creative Perfect here. Perfect time to go over the weapon. I'm 50 seconds into the video, and we've spent eight, eight minutes on the it. A little bit, their strengths and their weaknesses. No one can say that my reactions aren't transformative, okay? In a rapid-fire manner, as quickly as I can for each one, while also doing it in order of the easiest to hardest to actually come to grips with. Not necessarily the easiest or hardest to master as a weapon completely, but ones that will take a lot less time to just feel comfortable using in the actual progression part of the game in the first place will, of course, be labeled as easy, so you can start paying more attention to the monster in front of you and less to the weapon combos. Also keeping in mind that some weapons get a lot more comfortable with weapon skills, so I'll be judging them on their base self, no skills added, and talking mostly about how they feel to advance through the early and mid-game before you have an actual set put together the idea being hopefully this will help any new players i'm really curious to see where hammer falls on this considering trying on this like hopefully this his his classification of what's easy well. without further ado versus then, hard with the easiest weapon in my opinion sword and shield from bottom really to top, this weapon's okay. mantra is comfort while there are of course more advanced technical maneuvers and combos with a weapon the standard spam primary attack combo is actually really great it can link into the secondary make a 20 minutes video into into a two hours long video psycho troop go Go on my videos page and scroll back to um, like March, or you can even sort by most popular because a lot of them were very popular. Um, I did that when I was reacting to Dragon's Dogma. It took a concerted effort for me to get reaction times down much lower. <laughs> so um, that may happen with this one. Attack combo for an even longer chain that does blunt damage and can stun monsters. And if you press both buttons at the same time, you can legitimately just turn your SNS is unironically combo, a fun weapon. Which is awesome to let you continue combo chains. The idea being you walk up to a monster, you start. Okay, I guess I am kind of writing off SNS just because it's like basic in concept, but. As I'm seeing it, it does look 
It does look more and more. It does look fast more and fun. So, and but I want to. Sorry, I'm backing it up. I want to hear what they said. The primary attack combo is actually really great. It can link into the secondary attack combo for an even longer chain that does blunt damage and can stun monsters. And if you press oh, both buttons at the same stun, time, you can like really just turn your angle of attack mid combo, which is awesome to let you continue combo chains. Oh. The idea being, you walk up to a monster, you start a combo, and you can just keep comboing until the monster moves away or tries to hit you. Even if it moves a little bit, you have a directional spin to follow it and keep the damage up, which is fantastic. On top of that, as dinky and tiny as it is, you do have a shield. It can block most attacks, which is a great option to have while learning to dodge properly within this game. As well, while holding your shield up, you can use consumables without sheathing your weapon, which no other weapon in the game can do. This will save your life, and it can actually help you save the lives of other hunters and no other weapon in the game. As well, while holding your shield up, you can use consumables without sheathing your weapon, which no other weapon in the game can do. What? So, wait, so you can shield and then drink... Uh... Drink consumables? You made a promise to SNS users, never forget. It's a jack, jack of all trade uh, weapons. Backstep iframe is OPAF as well. Good at everything, master of none. One well, world, it's master of straight up damage. Wow, why haven't I. Well, I know why, because it's not bonking, but uh, it sounds like it is a little bit of bonking. By holding your shield up, you can drink potions. That does sound. That sounds kind of broken. <laughs> that, sounds like a, that sounds like a handicap. Um, but no, it sounds fun. Um, I did, I didn't make a promise to sword and shield you just that I would be there, be their voice. Is that why nobody's covering it though? Is it like everybody's too good? Everyone thinks all the other YouTubers think they're too good for the sword and shield. Should I be, I'm the noob. Should I be settling into sword and shield? It's just not as trash flashy, but control wise, it feels incredible. We won't need potion if we don't take damage. We're Chad. That's true. You, this will save your life. It can actually help you save the lives of other hunters in multiplayer as well, which is awesome. The true fun of the weapon, in my opinion, comes when you start to work in the charged backstep move, the falling bash, and the settle into one that's fun. I think the one that I'm gonna have the like, if we're getting really uh, picky about like maxing out the fun, the fun meter, <laughs> the fun meter in the upper left hand corner of the screen, um, it would be. Uh, it's going to be something that I can fully grasp and, and master. And one of the annoying things about Hammer is all the R2 attacks, I guess, when it seems like it should be like just uh, mash the face buttons on my controller attack kind of a weapon. So I could say like right now I'm close to mastering it with Hammer, but it's not, it's, it hasn't been quite as intuitive. So, um, so hope they talk about boomerang. All right, yeah, Perfect we'll see. Combo, but those aren't Jeff want a mashing weapon, Lolo. Not even that. If it was like all, like if it was just more centered around, I don't know. There's something. There's something just a little floaty, and it's kind of fun. It's part of the charm of the of the hammer. But like, I just don't feel like I'm exact in exact control, um, and it may just be a personality mesh. Well, only one. It's not about only one, but it's not. Okay. I don't want it to be easier. It's not, that's not what I'm saying. Like it could be like harder to master, but like there's, I don't know. I don't know. Something, something with the, like chat, the amount that like, I, okay. Some people in chat said I learned pretty quickly, but honestly, the amount that I had to like rely on chat to understand the hammer combos, like I went straight to like the, all the R2 combos and then had to like learn. I learned, I went from that and worked my way back uh, backwards to learning the basic combos and that felt like i just missed something so that's all pretty much every weapon utilizes more than face buttons yeah i don't know maybe it's just the way i came into it, it could just be could just be like new guy newbie newbie issues it's a bit more advanced the basics i mentioned though will get you through a lot of hunting as you adjust to more advanced techniques and it can do it without a lot of practice required Great sword it was a bit of a hard one to rank here because it is oh, sort it's of easy, simultaneously huh? on both extremes. The whole idea of this weapon is big number, infrequent hit. Actually connecting attacks with monsters less often than pretty much any other weapon, but oh. doing equivalent or greater damage over time just because the hits themselves are so meaty. As a result, you are honestly expected to miss with this weapon a fair amount. The game is balanced really? around great sword users not hitting every single swing, so when you do hit everyone, it gets really good. What I mean is don't feel bad when you miss. Draw attacking is also perfectly fine 
viable and an entire way to play the game that is fun. But True Charge Slash is more enjoyable okay. in my opinion. Either way, the weapon heavily focuses on the concept of charging your attacks, holding down the primary attack button charges, each oh, level that's doing fun. more damage than the last. While the weapon does have access to Ooh. other things like horizontal slashes, these are generally very rarely used. The main buttons that you need to know are primary attack for the charged vertical slash combo, and secondary attack while charging does a shoulder tackle. That tackle has hyper armor, so you don't get flinched by attacks, and it also reduces the damage you take from them significantly, and it also pushes you forward in the primary attack combo, making it really, really strong. Okay, so it's really more about the shoulder tackle than the um, while you're charging. That's funny. They give you a shoulder tackle while you charge, and, and then it's all on one button. It's all about spacing and timing. I feel like I have a little bit of a like idiot savant ability sometimes to time hits like unnecessarily well with the hammer. So I feel like this could work for me. And also I use colossal swords in my Elden Ring runs. So um you know, I think this I think this could work. I think this could work. I think I could like scale up to some bullshit some bullshit damage really fast or something. So um Knowing monster movement goes a long way for your great sword. Maybe that'll make it tougher for fighting new new monsters, though. Maybe great sword. I, maybe great sword's good for like when I need to grind out when when I've got quests with repeat hunts or something. Great sword will put your asthma gold percentage at around seventy five percent. Fair warning. Yeah, that's a good point. That's okay. What if I'm like a cool? What if I just become like a cooler Asmongold? What if I become like a like an Asmongold but more Gaijin? You know, what would I? What if I become Asmongold 2.0? You know, I would become Asmongold but more incel. You know, maybe that's a. We'll see. We'll see. I'm interested. I'm interested in greatsword. So. Greatsword can also put the weapon in front of them to guard, like a just be a better greatsword user than Asmund. All right, I think you do that. But generally, Asmund go with hair. Oh, <laughs> low blow, low blow. Hey, the Norwood Reaper comes for us all. Okay. That is seen as far less effective than a shoulder bash once you get your timing right on those. But it's a nice safety net to actually have access to. Essentially, your success with this weapon boils down to your un Asmund go with a clean room. I do have people come clean my room. Uh, but that's kind of cheating. He could do that too if he wanted to. Understanding of where to stand and when in a fight, of a monster's moveset and their timings. The difficult part. Not my mistress. Part of that is the first time that you fight something. You may well struggle with this. The good part of it, though, is that it puts all of your attention on the monster and not on the weapon you're using, which means that you will learn the basics of the game as a whole and the monster that you're fighting a whole lot faster than someone who is using Charge Blade, for example, who has to focus on their own weapon a lot more to actually get what they need out of it. And I think that is a big plus for beginners picking up a great sword. Dual blades are sort of the antithesis of greatsword. Blindingly fast really? strikes piddly little numbers. If the numbers don't matter to you and you just like cool animations and comfortable gameplay, then dual blades may be the answer for you. Like Sword and Shield, it of course has more technical combos, but dual blades can pump out a ton of damage even with just basic combos. This is the first weapon we've talked about that can't guard, and it also has access to demon mode, which flings your weapons into a backhanded grip, makes you Naruto run around like you've always dreamed of doing, and increases- I have always dreamed of doing that. Your damage. I've never had the had the nerve to do it in real life bunch while simultaneously draining your stamina constantly you've always dreamed of doing and increases your damage a bunch while simultaneously draining your stamina constantly this stamina drain can be rough for new players to get used to but it does also force you to learn about the stamina mechanic of the game in general which is important to come to grips with early long term this weapon becomes just as much about positioning as greatsword is but at a much sort of faster pace less recovery animations less rooted to the spot more you just have to actively increase the speed of your inputs to keep up with the fight in front of you and use your knowledge of the exact distance that each of your attacks travels to stick to a monster. Oh, and also you can Beyblade down monster spines, which is literally always enjoyable. Hammer is the one that I'd put. In. Oh, look, hey, we got to hammer. Okay. So I didn't pick the absolute easiest, I guess, right? He's doing these easiest to hardest, right? Isn't that what he said? Technical combos, just spam circle. Exactly. Blade dance is positioning like greatsword. Okay. We want more damage. Here's what I want to do. I think I'm going to go from I might try sword and shield next, um, but then like I want to try great sword into. Uh, well, no, I think I said great sword. We would want to do great sword next. What if we did? What if we did something crazy? What if we did like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears situation? We did great sword. This one's too heavy, and then we did uh, dual blades. This one's too light. And uh, and then and then we would do sword and shield, and it's like this one's just right. You know, we could do it like that. We could do great sword, and then jump from great sword to 
dual blades and just feel like Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> Boomerang is just perfect. Okay. All right, dude. Um, all five damage it does or whatever. I didn't, I never even saw how much damage it did. Um, but uh, that would be like a crazy shit from Great Sword to Dual Blades. So I'm going to be honest. Him putting Dual Blades easier than Hammer feels criminal to me, lol. It does look... I did get a little intimidated looking at that. I don't know. Maybe you guys are just really good instructors, though, in terms of hammer. You, let's just let's just ask. Let's let's ask or let's ask. Let's watch and see what he says about hammer. Distance that each of your attacks travels I'm to stick about to a this. monster. Oh, and also you can Beyblade down monster spines, which is literally always enjoyable. Hammer is the one that I'd put next here. A lot of people okay. consider this sort of great sword light. It is focused around big hits. It has charge attacks, but there are important differences to consider here. Maybe I consider great sword to be hammer heavy. You ever thought of that? Sort of great sword light. It is focused around big hits. It has charge attacks, but there are important differences to consider here too. Hammer is more combo focused than singular attack focused like great sword, with the big damage numbers coming at the end of a couple of your different combos. The charge attacks on this weapon mostly are just a damage numbers coming at the end of a couple more combo focused than singular attack focused like. Okay, it's more combo focused than. Oh, just like lining up and hitting one attack. For Great sword attack. with the big damage numbers coming at the end of a couple of your different combos. Okay, we learned that. I, I mean, I definitely solidified that in my brain last stream. The charge attacks on this weapon mostly are just a utility thing more than anything, because unlike Greatsword, you can charge hammer while moving. And so essentially the way to play it in this game is whenever you are running, charge the weapon so you can unleash a big hit when you actually reach the monster. Then if you are standing beside the monster, you want to use your actual proper combos. Hammer also does stun damage if you hit monsters in the head, which is great to teach you the concept of hit zones, which is different monster parts being weak or strong against different damage types and also different statuses like stun. The moves set then is generally simple that has strong environmental interactions with jump attacks slide attacks wall attacks all being high damage and easy to do and it simply requires less commitment than greatsword does with a lot of the same satisfaction to offer but it has less defensive options no blocking no shoulder tackle but instead it has much higher movement ability so if you like big hits and satisfying large slams but prefer the concept of dodging with position to guarding or tackling this is pretty much the perfect weapon for you oh and bonus Hmm, interesting. Given we are talking about Monster Hunter World, Hammer is essentially the only weapon that people agree across the board got a really cool Clutch Claw combo attack when the Clutch Claw was added into the game, so bonus points for that. Then we have Lance. Really? Am I missing out on something? Do I need to get Iceborne? <laughs> um, Dual Blades is stamina management, Hammer is the R2 button. Yeah. Dual Blades is harder than Hammer, IMHO. GS always feels slow, but hits are satisfying. My concern is it's going to feel too slow, and I was surprised at how athletic Hammer was uh, when I played it, or as I've been playing it. Um, it's very, like, you can get around quite a bit for a, for a weapon that's all about charging up stuff. Yeah, Clutch Claw Hammer attacks are awesome. Um, and Music of Paralysis Hammer is kind of based. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's kind of scaring me away from great sword a little bit, but I think we'll stick, we'll, we'll stick with, I may just have a stream where we just do a bunch of, uh, I need to do a bunch of side quests anyway. And so we could do side quests with weapons and get it figured out. But, um, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. You put it up here. Great sword already sounds harder to me than hammer, but then maybe like I, a personal I didn't person, want to place this one thing. too early to give people the wrong idea, but Lance is in fact incredibly easy to come to grips with, at least early on. It's really? It seems like the hardest one to me. It, it definitely seems like the hardest one for me. Um, I, but I was mostly looking at Lance in Monster Hunter Wilds. Essentially, this weapon is a gigantic hulking shield and a big pokey stick, and the way you use it is by sticking the giant shield in front of your face so nothing can hurt you, and then doing little thrusts with the lance itself to actually do the damage. The weapon is... Block, spam, block and spam poke? Lance is definitely a difficult weapon. Hmm. Is the turtle weapon of Monster Hunter. It is heavily defensively focused, and a lot of players find the gameplay loop quite tedious, as essentially your goal <laughs> is to block every single attack the monster does, and then just poke nonstop until the next time that you need to block. It isn't particularly flashy looking, there isn't a massive amount of thought required to go into it, and while it is easy in concept, there is quite a lot to master when it comes to positioning with such a heavy weapon, and perfecting the art of when to block and when to poke. You also have a couple... I... I have the feeling that like this would be really good to like like once you learn it, you can like zone out and grind out quests with this. Jeff will struggle. A couple of counters which hmm. are quite fun to play with, but most game block timing though. Uh oh, uh oh. 
Uh oh. I I like rarely blocking games. Well, I mean Liza P forced me to block in order to beat it. So there's that. But Elden Ring, I've never blocked a single parry the single time in Elden Ring. Or blocked. Gameplay will be block or poke. For this reason, I often don't recommend this to new players because it's just sort of different than the playstyle of the other weapons. But if it sounds like it speaks to you, then you should go for it. There's nothing wrong with having one weapon that you just love above everything else and just playing it exclusively. You just, you know, might miss out on the fun of the other weapons. Then we have yeah. Longsword, and this is an extremely popular weapon choice. This weapon is, well, a gigantic katana. If that sounds like something that you're into, then you probably already made your choice because this weapon embodies that entirely. You have some fun basic attack combos Combos, you use that to build your spirit bar, which then lets you use the spirit combo, which is a strong attack combo that increases your spirit gauge, changing the color of the bar as a whole. Each new color of the bar represents a general damage buff, with white, orange, and red being the progressing levels of it. These have a timer on them that will slowly deplete and needs to replenishing, and you can also spend your spirit gauge levels on special attacks like Helmbreaker, which is flashy as all hell and does a ton of damage too. On top of this, Longsword has access to multiple parries, one of which needs more setup, but the other one can literally interrupt attack animation to enter which makes it incredibly comfortable as a way of playing essentially i i like everything i'm hearing so far from the long sword i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie chat i like everything i'm i like everything he's saying right now um i like that you're building i like that it's it's building in one direction that's 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 a good way for me to start learning meters i think you know, like you're just building one thing up multiple levels and then you can spend it on special attacks and stuff and you rebuild it by comboing. I like the counter. If it's like a unique counter thing, there's precedent. I played Smash Bros. I used to play Marth and Smash Bros. I could I could do a counter or two. I could do a counter or two. Um, Longsword transforming into a counter weapon in Monster Hunter World is funny AF. How many damage buffs do you want? Yes, exactly. Exactly. I think this video is going for using the weapons at a baseline level, not to its full potential. That's a good point, Milk Things, probably. But um, I'm probably a long way off from using any one weapon to its full potential until I've like locked in which one that could be. Because I feel like that turns into a, that becomes a personality thing at some point. I would imagine. Longsword spear gauge is a bit annoying. Oh. On top How of this, so? Longsword has access to multiple parries, one of which needs more setup, but the other one can literally interrupt attack animations to enter, which makes it incredibly comfortable as a way of playing. Essentially, you can just focus on that parry, use it to level up your spirit gauge, and then use Helmbreaker at full spirit gauge and play that way on repeat. That playstyle is... That sounds a little spammy. Super easy, super effective damage-wise, and will have a similar effect to the earlier mentioned weapons where you are spending your time paying more attention to the monster than to your weapon, as parrying as a concept inherently makes you pay closer attention attention to what the monsters are doing. I think I'm ready to pay attention to the weapon a bit. I think cuz we're getting repeat monsters right now. Right now they're repeating the monsters, so now it's a good time to pay attention to the weapon. Um Uh before Monster Hunter World, it was just a normal mid-speed combo weapon. Spirit gauge resource management is definitely a spammy weapon in this game, lol. Okay. Maybe it's not that fun then. It's got me more curious though. The range longsword has is nasty. After that, let's talk about bow. This is the first of the oh. range weapons that I have on this list. And while being ranged does have inherent advantages as you get a bigger picture of the area in the fight, as well as more space to work with when avoiding monster attacks, bow itself is very agile with its movements. And its main gameplay loop is based around the idea of shot levels. You can charge your bow shots to reach maximum charge level and fire off their strongest version. Or alternatively, every time you fire arrows successively, you go up one charge level on the attack. So you can charge by attacking. The only reason that you wouldn't do this is something called co hold on hold on it's bow i'm gonna have to hear it a couple times before i understand <laughs> is based around the idea of smooth. shot levels. You can charge your bow shots to reach maximum charge level and fire off their strongest version, or alternatively, every time you fire arrows successively, you go up one charge level on the attack, so you can charge by attacking. The only oh, that's interesting. The only reason that you wouldn't do this is something called coatings, which are something that you have a limited amount of in between resupplies, and alter the effects and damage of your shots as well. Oh, so you wouldn't want to use multiple attacks just to get an easy charge up because you use the code because it would uh, use up your your coding stock. Notice no ones in any of those damage numbers. This is true bow. This is true bow damage. Oh, you're right. The wild's bow made it look so bad, lol. 
Yeah, I th- damage wise. Yeah, that was the video where we figured out that um, they were definitely giving basic weapons to people, like starting weapons, and then giving them the option to do a more uh, difficult quest, right? Or difficult hunt. I think that's what we decided there. So it was all ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, from my video that I put out today. Coatings, I which are something that you have a limited amount of in between resupplies, and alter the effects and damage of your shots as well. Bow has access to a fun spread shot follow up to its more rapid shots, and also has a fun interaction where when you do a dodge while charging a bow shot, you go up one bonus charge level. And so the gameplay often winds up looking like a blitzingly fast archer dashing circles around their foe, aiming the arrows at the weak spots of the monster while being impossible to hit. Also, you get dragon pierce as an attack, which is just a badass special move. It definitely has a different feel to the other weapons, but it is more familiar than the next couple of them. Like, It looks pretty sick in Monster Hunter World. I, I, that's one thing I'm going to say. And the way he's describing it is uh, it makes it sound... Um, it sounds like an enjoyable loop. Dodge, hit, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot, dodge, shoot. Um, bow is a late-game weapon because it needs stamina, stamina skill and element, which are hard to come by early. And charge level unlock. Okay. All right. Well, um, well, I was going to say it's like maybe it's maybe it's one of the first range weapons I can work towards, but maybe maybe we'll we'll hear out the uh, the gun weapons. I just still can't take it seriously that they just put guns at the game. That's my only thing with that. But it's a very fun weapon, but you'll need to wait a bit to get to the skills for it to truly shine. Okay. I hope we still. I hope I don't run out of game by accident. Uh, uh, I don't think I will. I don't think I, something tells me you guys all have like 400 hours in this game, right? Um, Bo definitely drops off at the end end game. I hope I, if I have, I hope I have enough time to get really, really good at several different weapons and max a bunch of them out and be able to swap them out and stuff. 1500 hours. There's a lot of game left. Uh, the defense of a range of range weapon is huge de- de- detriment. What about the end 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 game run out of game? Close to 1,450 hours. Oh my God. <laughs> I've got all the, I got all the pros in my chat. Look at this. Like Bowgun is for all. Inter- Where's your guys' channels? If you guys start channels, you can show them in my Discord or whatever. I could react to your videos. Feel to the other weapons, but it is more familiar than the next couple of them. Like Bowgun is for all intents and purposes, a gun. Yes, lore wise, they are heavily engineered automatic crossbows. For Wait. all intents and ill to the other weapons, but it is more familiar than the next couple of them. Like Bowgun is for all intents and purposes a gun. Yeah. Too busy playing Monster Hunter. Valid, valid, valid reason. Yes, lore wise, they are heavily engineered automatic crossbows that fire ammo produced from various kinds of nuts that have different effects, which is really cool. But game cope. It's a gun. It's a gun with like a rope aesthetic. It's not actually attached to anything in the chamber. That's what I've decided. Play wise, it feels like you're using a gun. If you my my actually my conspiracy theory is that bow guns are they're literal guns. It's just a normal gun, but they were created in whatever country these people are from, where they outlawed guns specifically, like like firing chamber, like guns. So they. Uh, uh, so they engineered a gun that has a disguise around it that looks like a bow with a string that's twanging every time you shoot. But in reality, that's a separate mechanism purely for aesthetic, deceptive aesthetic purposes. And then they've slightly modified the ammo to appear arrow-like in nature to further go along with the ruse. But really, it's an evasion around gun control laws. Big brain. I figured it out. I figured it out. The ma- the physics were not physicking. The math was not mathing, but the conspiracy was conspiracying, and I figured it out. I figured it out. So, um, just FYI, range weapon have no uh, lower innate defense. Okay, I would. Oh, okay. Well, I think the goal with the range weapon is just to not get hit, regardless. I guess. It's just a game. It's just a theory. A game theory. A gaijin theory. Exactly. Jeff the engineer. Yes. Nuts that have different effects, which is really cool. But gameplay wise, it feels like you're using a gun. If you, that's what you want, then one of the two bow guns will probably be for you. Light bow guns. Okay. I guess they engineered the bolts to look like nuts, but really they're like they're flesh piercing bullets that will kill on sight 
launched from a real gun. Special attack is against mines that it can drop on the floor, which explode either when a monster attacks them or if a player attack connects with them. Mines that it can drop what you want, then one of the two bow guns will probably be for you. Light bow gun special attack is against mines that it can drop on the floor, which explode either when a monster attacks them or if a player attack connects with them, doing loads of bonus damage to monsters that are actually close to them. I feel like I would just screw that up. Light bow guns tend to be ridiculously more agile than their heavy counterparts, with faster movement just in general, faster movement while firing, some pretty long range dodge rolls, and also just much more wieldly weapons, just generally speaking. Less okay, so I would stay alive longer, but I would screw up that special attack all the time. I agree with, I agree with Jeff. Palico, use 50 cal. Exactly. It's recoil. Yeah, you know. You know I'm a lunatic. I'm going to botch that so hard. I've got, I, we got to, that's an end game one for me. That's a late game weapon. For just, just for my playthrough, that's a late game weapon but also less damage, just easier and more comfortable to actually use, and in actuality, whichever you are more comfortable with will always do more damage for you. As actually use, and in actuality, whichever load time, but also less damage, just easier and more comfortable to actually use, and in actuality, whichever you are more comfortable with will always do more damage for you. As for heavy bow gun, then, this weapon can be modified to have a shield on it that you can essentially just block with, with its actual out of holster movement speed being slow as hell, so you sort of need that. Essentially, greatsword level movement speed, but that is because it is a great sword of ranged weapons, and this thing feels more like an anti-tank rifle or a minigun compared no. to a light bow gun. A lot of your strongest ammo types will root you to the spot or limit your movement significantly. You will often, especially without skills, find yourself rooted on the spot while reloading or even shooting, but you have a ton of damage potential, the shield option, and you have two special attacks to choose between, one of which is a literal minigun for a bit, and the other is a single massive piercing sniper shot that explodes afterwards. Generally speaking, a I would say for a bit, and the other option, and you have two special attacks to choose between, one of which is a literal minigun for a bit, and the other is a single massive piercing sniper shot that explodes afterwards. Generally speaking, I would Sounds cool. Sounds sick. The bow guns are some of the most gear reliant weapons in the game, by which I mean that what they gain from endgame gear isn't just pure damage or pure defense, they gain actual functionality of the weapon, with proper ability to change the full-on comfort of using them in a ton of different aspects. So playing either of these two weapons while progressing it is a totally different experience than it is playing them at endgame, and that is important to be aware of, not to mention ammo management is much- What am I gonna unlock? Get little Tim that mod deuce. <laughs> Hell yeah. It's hard to do early on before you can craft and buy whatever you need before a hunt later. In I'm kind of getting the vibe that next stream I should just do all um, side quests, investigations, expeditions, go back and, and do stuff I've missed, and then just, just cycle through a bunch of different weapons uh, if if the uh if the crafting allows for it if i'm able to craft stuff strong enough um that would be fun okay how long do you think how long do you think well i guess there's what there's 20 different there, there's not 20 there's like what 10 10 weapons let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen is this one buffs Okay, it's like 13 or 14. 14? 14 chads? I could just do like two weeks of it. Um, you could use defender weapons. You already have 15 because boomerang? True. True. What should the, what should the subscriber goal be for, uh, for, <laughs> for to do a boomerang only run? That should be my reward where like I get so many subscribers on Twitch I could just quit I could quit all my other work and uh and, and do this full time. That's the reward. When you guys feed me, when you guys put food on the table, boomerang only run. <laughs> Monster Hunter World. Timed. Timed. Stream doesn't end until I beat the game. Uh using only boomerangs. God the the title and thumbnail would go so hard for that. Why did I say that? Why did I say that? That would make the most banger YouTube video of all time. Please tell me someone hasn't done that. I can't stream. I can't stop streaming until I beat Monster Hunter World with Boomerang or, or you know, whatever. Um, you can do some warm-up with new weapons and a little progression each time. Yeah. If you ever do a subathon, Boomerang only run would be great for it. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, I could do that. Subathon, huh? 
Interesting. In the game. After that, then let's talk Gun Lance. This is another big, meaty shield and lance weapon, but unlike its earlier compatriot, it has higher burst damage options, but also much longer recovery frame periods. Essentially, this is just a giant gun stick with a big shield, and so when you use it, there is a lot more management yeah. going on than the standard lance. You have different types of gun lance, Wait, that have different oh. firing styles, some of which can charge. Oh, I'm used to looking at the one from Wilds. I haven't seen the ones from Worlds. This one looks elegant, magical, outright magical. Look at this one. Your compatriot, it has higher burst damage options, but also much Oh, and the lid pops open and it's a little bazooka underneath. How lovely. After a quick search, I did not find any boomerang only run on YouTube. Let's fuck. Okay, no one, no one, no one say anything. That's mine. That's mine. Copyright. Copyright. <laughs> that, that one's mine. Copyright Jeff Gaijin. <laughs> Gunlands is elegant. Longer recovery frame periods. Essentially, oh this gosh. is a giant gun stick with a big shield, and so when you use it, there is a lot more management going on than the standard lance. You have different types of gun lance that have different firing styles, some of which can charge the shots for longer range, some just have a huge spread but high damage close range, and some that have a lot of ammo before a reload is required, but also offer a unique gameplay style due to gun lance actually having a move that can unload its full magazine in one go. What? Oh, is that what that is? That's cool. That's cool. So, well, like, is it required? Would you say it's 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 a good idea to learn lance before gun lance, or do they play very differently? Full burst, my beloved. <laughs> Every move is calculated. Uh, not the same. They play differently. Not necessary. Okay. This one can be a challenge for a beginner to take on, or even just early on in the game without skills, but it has some of the most consistent damage of any weapon early on, because at least when using shells, it doesn't care about hit zones, which means if you are going for pure shelling, you will have super consistent output. However, that said, that can also breed some bad habits for other weapons if you are brand new, so while I think this weapon is absolutely worth using, and it does have quite a bit of tactical aspects you have to learn, I generally wouldn't advise it as your first first weapon. It can be easy to use at first for sure, but it takes a ton of skill to master. Oh, and that looks so cool. Cool, though. Don't really easily transfer to other weapons. Then we have the switch axe. Oh, thank you for the tier one subscription that you gifted, uh, Psycho. Uh, I'll, I'll just say uh, Psycho Troop. Thank you. I gotta, I gotta work on the colors on that. Thank you. This is Appreciate essentially you. a giant axe that turns into a giant sword. Hey, congrats, Ziggy. The axe bonk, attacks bonk. are very wild, dangerous looking, savage, smashing. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let's back this up. Other weapons. Then we have the switch axe. All right, here's the swax. Bonk, 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 bonk. This is essentially a giant axe that turns into a giant sword. That bonk looks great. I can see it and everything. The axe attacks are very wild, dangerous oh, looking, this looks savage, sick. smashy, and the sword attacks are very elegant, practiced, Ooh. and precise. As a weapon, it is very fun to look at, and I can see a lot of people gravitating towards it when trying the game out for the first time. The core of the weapon is its transforming nature and how you use it, as if you time it right, even the transformation of the weapon is an attack in itself that can do a load of damage. That's a cool touch. Essentially, you have two different gauges to manage with this weapon. The inner bar represents how much- Oh, that's so many gauges. ...much sword energy you have without sword energy you can't enter sword mode attacking in sword mode drains this bar and it regenerates over time with axe mode hits on monsters as well attacking but the switch axe okay so it's using energy to like extend out from being a sword into an axe or no no no, no it's no is it switching oh no 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 okay so when it's folded it is a it is in uh it's an axe so it uses the energy to extend out into the sword. Okay, I'll give it. All right, the, the physics check out. The physics check out. The identity crisis weapon. <laughs> um, axe to sword. Axe to sword. Sword expunges energy. What does he mean? Switch axe is hard. I'll, I'll, I'll just latch on to the monster and SSD. Or ZSD at LMA. That's zero sum discharge, right? Or something? We saw that. Switching between the the two are being in axe regions energy. Being in sword mode, however, will and it regenerates over time with 
sword energy, you can't enter sword mode. Attacking in sword mode drains this bar, and it regenerates over time with axe mode hits on monsters as well. Attacking in sword mode, however, will also fill an outer gauge on the bar. Once that gauge is full, sword mode damage is heavily boosted for a time, including the special move where you latch onto the monster's body and perform zero sum discharge, an extremely cool explosion move where you spam the button and then fly off propulsed by your own thrust. A very, very fun attack for sure. Of course, overall, the management of these things as well as the wild swing axe buff that was added Ooh, in Iceborne there it makes is. this a bit of a tougher weapon to approach for newer players. As well as these the things, what? As well as the wild swing axe buff that was added in Iceborne wild swing axe buff makes this a bit of a tougher weapon to approach for newer players but in reality it's sort of just timers to be aware of more than anything that you have to actively manage and overthink i want you to know after that i have insect blade this weapon can't to actively manage and overthink i want you to know after that um Wait, what did they say? Timers to be aware of more than anything that you have to weapon to approach for newer players. But in reality, it's sort of just timers to be aware of more than anything that you have to actively manage and overthink. Okay, it's just timers. You don't got to think too much about it. Okay. But I guess every new players get a little entitled. Or not, shoot, not entitled. Overwhelmed. Jeez. Wake up, dude. Um, that entire pickle is tenderized, LMAO. What is this giant freaky thing I'm looking at? This is... I'm this game's not even close to over I don't think how many extra hours does Iceborne add by the way like in terms of quests like hundreds I hope or something I think right it's a pickle this is a pickle an occasional glance top left is enough to understand where your gauges are at swag axe might be one of the first like cool weapons I try out it seems like it could be pretty uh pretty good pretty good pretty reasonable to transition into it's bigger than base game ice board is his own game hundreds it's another game same as world if you do in game stuff maybe a thousand jesus christ wow okay okay so do people when they do like their playthrough they do the base game and then they do iceborne right Iceborne is where you will spend most of your time if you really get into it. Oh, we're into it. We're into it. I'm 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 too I'm too deep in to back out now. Only way out is through. There's a reason it's forty dollars, lol. Yeah, but I mean I paid forty dollars for the Elden Ring DLC expansion. And I I did beat it in like a week. <laughs> so um and like by beat it in a week, I mean I maxed out I maxed out everything. Uh, I got a little help at the end from the guides, but and then explored everything and beat all the bosses and then beat the final thing. So I did everything in like a week. Um, they say the base game is the tutorial for Iceborne. That's so based. That's so cool. That's cool. I want you to know, after that, I have Insect Blade. This weapon can be extremely simple, but if it is, it means you're not using it. That gives me huge hopes for my pet... My personal soft spot game, my pet, my pet game that I like is Dragon's Dogma because that's kind of what where I really kind of found success initially and was like figuring stuff out. I really that gives me a lot of hope for you know future Dragon's Dogma stuff. Now that Dragon's Dogma two, they like did a redo and there's a little bit of controversy, but it seems like uh, from internal reports, Capcom is satisfied with the results based on what they put into it. Um, I hope. I hope we can get something like that in the future for Dragon's Dogma 2 as well, if, since it's the same publisher. So I have Insect Blade. This weapon can be extremely simple, okay. but if it is, it means you're not using it properly. Essentially, for the weapon to be fully functional, you need to constantly have three buffs active. You get these buffs by shooting your bug companion at the monster, and different body parts will give you different colors of buff. Red buff increases the damage that you do and gives you access to other parts of your moveset. White buff increases movement speed and unlocks more aerial attacks for your moveset. And orange buff boosts your defenses. All three active together also have some further bonuses, so you pretty much just want to have all of them all the time. They do disappear on a timer, though, so every 90 seconds or so without skills, you have to actively rebuff yourself before you can attack again properly. Outside of that, the gameplay is actually relatively simple and very enjoyable, and you get to have a cool bug that follows you around and helps you out. Essentially, the question here is, do you have the patience to frequently manage your buffs in order to hunt properly, or will you just go unga bunga mode with it? Because if... <coughs> no. If you go in the bunga mode with it, it's not really worth it. 
If you don't, however, and you actually take the time to understand it, it's really good and it's not even the most difficult to understand. And again, that leads us to our next weapon, second hardest weapon to learn in my opinion, Hunting Horn. And this it does look fun to do the, the aerial, aerial attacks, but uh, the bug thing, I could see it not being that big of a deal. If, since I, I, I seem to launch right now, I, my dumbass seems to launch attacks that hit all different parts of the monster's body anyway, but it's not intentional. So, um, but I, th I think we could, I think we could maybe try it end game or something. It would be nice to kind of see if it's fun to be in the air, but all that management sounds, man, I don't know. And not even in, in, in fear, irritating, infuri infuriating. Yeah. Infuriating. Yeah. It's the buffs and the really high and the not really high hitboxes that swat you like a fly. Oh, okay. Oh, the most irritating thing about Insect Glaive is the buffs and the uh, high hitboxes that swat you like a fly. Um, soloing monster with uh, IG is not true soloing. It's a two v one with Bug Bunny. Okay, that's true. If they if they uh, I, I could see that I could see that logic. If that if the bugs any good. It, my, the other thing is the bug seems like it has, at least in wild, seems like it has a big return time on it. Like you have to wait a little bit longer than I'd want uh, to wait to get the juice. Uh, if they make getting buffs easier in wilds, I'll play Glaive. Uh, I just don't want to deal with the chores. I did see in, well, we'll, we'll get into that video next, but I did see in, uh, in wilds, uh, there's like some special move now where you get all three at once uh, that wasn't there before, so... The bugs can be upgraded. Okay. Um, they apparently should, but oh yeah, that's that's a good point. Psycho troop. Uh, there's another video of, I'm gonna that I reacted to that I got to put out where he talks about that. But uh, they apparently changed a lot in wilds for the insect glaive. I've seen IG creators say they are not thrilled. Yeah, they like nerfed him. They clipped his wings. So again, that leads us to. Oh, it's the focus strike. Okay, that does that uh, fills the juice. Gets all the juices. Yeah. Next weapon, second hardest weapon to learn in my opinion, Hunting Horn. And this is of course specifically the World and Iceborne version of it. Essentially, Ooh, they're just a horn. metric truckload of things to think about and have on your mind for effective Hunting Horn gameplay in this game. Yeah, but you got what? Look at this, look at this shit. You've got a whole little rhythm game going on. You're playing Guitar Hero while you're getting eaten alive? Come on, man. It is kind of cool. It, it does look, it does, there's some weird allure about it. I won't lie. I won't lie. There's some weird like personality buff that it's it's got. Iceborne version of it. Essentially, there are just a metric truckload of things to think about and have on your mind for effective hunting horn gameplay in this game. But it is also conceptually my favorite weapon out of all of them. A giant bonking stick that you use to play music, and that music buffs you and also any allies that you have around. But also the way that you play music is by attacking the monster. So essentially, each of your three basic attack choices are a different color of note, and you create. Song. Oh, so even in this game, you you buff by attacking the monster. Okay. You and also Wasn't any allies that you have around but also the way that you play music is by attacking the monster so essentially each of your three basic attack choices are a different color of note and you create songs by comboing the notes together correctly but also most of your attacks have different animations depending on which direction your left stick is pointing and those have a massive impact once you do you think after sorry this is a little unrelated but do you think after monster hunter uh wilds they're gonna try and uh Reclaim the branding that they they might have had from something with World, and we'll get Monster Hunter Universe. I think that's next, unless it's already happened. Duder's got a dude, just a different way of playing the game. It's relatively complex, though, when compared to Jeff. To others, could Jeff compute it? I can compute anything if I'm paid enough. With enough money, I'll understand it. I'll figure out anything animations depending on which direction your left stick is pointing and those have a massive impact once you have played the right notes you then i'm a programmer who hates coding i got to six figures you pay me enough i'll do anything you need to perform your melody which is a not anything not anything but you know i'll work very hard and i'll learn very fast 
and those have a massive impact. Once you have played the right notes, you then need to perform your melody, which is a relatively long animation with very low movement speed during it, but it also does good damage if you attack the monster with it. And if you want to increase the potency of the buffs, you can also encore it, which basically just doubles that animation length to give you stronger buffs. Unlike the Insect Glaive, the way that you get these buffs is baked into how you do damage with the weapon, so it sort of works with just fighting in normal, but also the buffs are much harder to actually manage, and the weapon is balanced around you always having everything up as that is your expected state of being. It's difficult, it is slow, but it's very heavy hitting and extremely rewarding and satisfying, especially in group play where you can buff your allies too. Then finally, we have the Charge Blade. Okay, um, well, spoilers, the Charge Blade he's considering the hardest. Um, that all entirely went over my head. <laughs> I would go back and rewatch it again, but uh, we I got a dedicated video here that I can react to for this. So I think I'm just gonna do that. Uh, for, for the hunting horn. Um, I think I'll just kind of try to understand it a little bit more. Or maybe I'll wait wait a couple weeks and then we'll react, but um, all right, continuing on. Especially in group play where you can buff your allies too. Then finally, we have the charge blade. This weapon is awesome, transforming from sword and shield into a gigantic elemental ax that can even become a saw blade, which is even oh, cooler so in my sick. personal opinion. This weapon has even more things to think about at any given time than hunting horn or any other weapon does, and that's why I think it is essentially the least beginner friendly of them all. If you start with this weapon, you will be constantly thinking about the weapon itself. Okay, so not most difficult, least beginner friendly. So that's like if you're totally fresh to it less so about your general movement, less so learning the monster's patterns, and as a result, it will take you a lot longer to get a hold of the basics of the game that you're playing, which is why I recommend using something simpler to start off with for at least the first couple of hours before diving headfirst into Charge Blade. That said, it is an extremely rewarding weapon for the- First couple hours? Okay, so I'm like way past the time on, on any of this, or for any of these. I could try any of these, basically. I disagree, you can manage with only managing two buffs, the files and charging your shield amount of learning that you have to put in. It is very satisfying with its guard points, which are essentially counters. It has a file system that you have to charge by attacking monsters. You can load files into your shield to boost your defenses and increase your options in axe mode too. And essentially sword and shield mode sort of exists as an effective way to charge your files. Then axe mode exists as your primary way to spend the files. But this weapon has about four different timers you have to stay on top of as well. And it even has different moveset speeds too. Like your literal movement speed is different depending on the mode that your weapon is in. And a lot of very tight timing window interactions with the weapon. Weapon too. Essentially, this just requires the most time spent just to actually understand and learn the weapon properly, but it is absolutely worth it if it does interest you. And it's one of the most satisfying weapons, in my opinion, especially the World and Iceborne version of it. And it does sound a little tough, but I did I did pick up the basics pretty decently with chat's help uh, when I tried it on the, my very first stream. He speaks so fast, lol. Oh, yeah, it's, it's that YouTuber voice. Um, and uh, I got the impression that if it's if I applied myself and if it's if the mechanics are architected the way that I suspect they are, that it would be a very very satisfying and it would be it could be like the only weapon I want to play. So I almost feel like I want to take my time getting to that one, try all the other ones, and uh, especially because there's different. It seems like there's different concepts in there that I can learn from other weapons first. And uh, um, and then, like, I could see myself ending on this one because it's just such a main character. It's so, I mean, let's be real. It's so streamer friendly, is it not? I think I, like, when I, every time I go and I research Monster Hunter, uh, Monster Hunter, like, I go and check, like, oh, like, who's live right now on Twitch playing Monster Hunter World? Top person's always someone using Charge Blade. It's so streamer friendly because it's so like dope and flashy and stuff, but there's a barrier to entry. So you got to be, you can't just be like a casual or whatever, maybe just a slight barrier or something. A lot of monster hunter is learning the monster and then learning a weapon. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. S a D draws people in re releases dopamine. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, but yeah, anything that releases dopamine, you know,
And that does it for today then everyone, just a nice run through and breakdown as quick as possible of each of the 14 weapons, what they do, what they feel like, how they feel early game as opposed to later on. And I mean, you never know though, cause like ostensibly that's like in, in Dragon's Dogma 2, the version, the, the charge blade equivalent in Dragon's Dogma 2 was supposed to be Mystic Spear Hand. And I think I had some pretty good streams with, I had a good stream with Mystic Spear Hand, like the content I made was pretty cool, but I got way, I think we had way more hype moments out of a, a basic vocation like Thief, you know? So something like Dual Blades, like someone like me, I might be able to get a lot more fun, like fun factor out of something like, uh, something basic that's just got some kind of cracked thing in it. Um, we just want damage, damage, <laughs> yeah. You mentioned you were going to learn sword, sword and Shield next, right? Um, I think I'm going to do Great Sword, Dual Blades, Sword, sword and Shield. Um, all weapons are Colts and everyone wants you in theirs. <laughs> I have to unite all the tribes together. That's the goal, right? Oh, man. Do you think it's, like, deep enough that, like, different audiences on my videos for different weapons are, like, they're exclusive? Like, they start to get kind of exclusive. That would be good to know. This has got a huge fan base. I got to think about stuff like that. Um, some of us are parts of multiple cults. Become the Avatar. Yeah, absolutely. Damn, I didn't even think about that. That's so interesting. If you wanted a, a fun time, I'd wec I'd, I'd I was about to say, I recommend. I'd recommend looking up weapon speedrun. You can see some crazy shit. Okay. Damn. Uh, all right. And the learning curve is for what's, today. What's satisfying weapons, in my opinion, especially the World and Iceborne version of it. And that does it for today, then, everyone. Just a nice run through and breakdown as quick yeah, as possible that was good. of each of the 14 weapons. What that they was do, good. what they feel like, how they feel early game as opposed to later on, and the learning curve that you can expect. This doesn't mean that you should avoid playing any of the weapons based on anything that I've said here. They are all generally great, and if it speaks to you, you should play it. This is just to help you pick what the actual knowledge to go from, especially for new players. Again, there's this flowchart that I made. Of course, it's a little bit silly, but I did make it with the intention of it actually being helpful. So while this video is the long answer to the question, I think of the flowchart as a sort of short answer. So of course, feel free to refer. Well, I'm glad I did it at the start. So, you know, I mean, maybe I should have done it at the end. So everyone had to suffer through and I get all the watch time because I went pretty long. Look back to it as needed. Uh, I hope you've all enjoyed yeah. this and hopefully it's helped you out. No, a good job. Thank you very much. I see people trying out new weapons yeah. in this series. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. That was good. No, that was really good. I really appreciated that. That was like extremely helpful. Everyone should subscribe to Rage Gaming videos. They're a small up and coming channel like myself, only 1.26 uh, with a letter after it, subscribers. You know, kind of like me. I'm at, uh, I'm at like, uh, what am I at? I'm at like 1.86 with the letter after it, subscribers, you know? Yeah, I'm at 1.85. Well, he's just at 1.26 with the letter after it, subscribers. So, um, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, kind of new. I, I want to like, you know, show love to new creation. No, they're, they're huge. They're huge. They're a huge uh, channel, but that was very, there's a reason for that. That was very good. I learned a lot. Um, kind of feel a little bit more secure in my choices. I think like a good spread maybe for the, uh, like the initial stream where I try stuff on side quest would be great sword uh great sword then dual blades then sword and shield and maybe if there's time um looking at something like uh, maybe long sword or something like that or maybe like a switch axe situation um so and then we could like chunk it out from there so just remember, when in doubt, swax it out. Well, yeah, and thank you so much uh, if you're watching on YouTube. If you like the video, please uh, like and subscribe on the channel. But uh, even more importantly, uh, I do stream live on Twitch every Tuesday and Thursday at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, EST right now. And uh, it's twitch.tv slash gaijin hideout. I'll just make this other one right here, make it real big so I can put it on the screen and then hide it and stuff. But uh, definitely come give us a follow here. You can join me in the chat on the screen. And uh, we have a lot of fun. Uh, we sometimes do spontaneous. I'm going to call them spontaneous because I was late tonight. We're going to do like spontaneous 
uh, streams every now and then where I live react and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye YouTube.